Everyone dreams of saying I do to the perfect husband, having a grand wedding, and living happily ever after. But rarely do we think the fairy tale wedding we dreamt of will end up as a front page headline of Tinseltown tabloids. In this series, we explore the rise and fall of Hollywood's greatest romances and how the most blissful marriages ended in divorce riddled with scandal. The Glamour Files presents Hollywood Divorce. In 1958, Singing in the Rain star Debbie Reynolds was a Hollywood actress on the rise. Reynolds succeeded in the film industry, had a fairy tale marriage to singer Eddie Fisher, and also had a wonderful family. But by 1959, Reynolds' life was turned upside down after rumors of Eddie Fisher having an affair with Elizabeth Taylor swept through Hollywood like wildfire, ultimately leading to a messy scandal and divorce. So what caused this sensational scandal that ended in Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher's Hollywood divorce? Stay tuned to find out more. From humble beginnings, Mary Frances Debbie Reynolds was born on April 1, 1932 in El Paso, Texas. By the 1950s, Reynolds blossomed into America's sweetheart. As a rising actress, she starred in MGM musical comedies. With a successful career in Hollywood and a growing friendship with actress Elizabeth Taylor, a big star at MGM, Debbie Reynolds was also looking for love. Reynolds first met famed singer Eddie Fisher, born on August 10, 1928, overseas while entertaining American troops during the Korean War. Eddie Fisher was known for his crooning tenor voice, which propelled him to become a teen idol and one of the most successful recording artists of the early 1950s. He sold millions of records, had more hits than the Beatles and Elvis combined, and hosted a 1957 TV show called The Eddie Fisher Show. The early years of Debbie Reynolds' courtship with Eddie Fisher were spent dating and attending Hollywood parties, film premieres, and press events. Initially, they loved being at home as a young couple. Reynolds and Eddie Fisher were so smitten that they often referred to themselves as prince and princess after being nicknamed by the press. Despite being smitten, the cracks in Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher's relationship were predicted from the very beginning. Reynolds co-star from the 1955 movie The Tender Trap, Frank Sinatra, gave Reynolds sound advice on love. Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher were most likely engaged at this time because Reynolds was very excited to marry the Lady in Spain crooner, but one of her co-stars was not so excited. Reynolds told People Magazine in 2015 that Frank Sinatra himself warned Reynolds against marrying a singer like him. He said, oh, don't marry Eddie, we're not faithful. A warning Debbie Reynolds admittedly would later regret. In Hollywood, Reynolds made a splash on the big screen in Two Weeks with Love in 1950 and the global hit Singing in the Rain in 1952. She and Fisher were married in 1955 and had a daughter, Carrie Fisher, who was born the following year. Reynolds and Fisher lived a charmed Hollywood life and were often photographed in the company of their good friends Elizabeth Taylor and Mike Todd. The Fishers spent their weekends, had barbecues, and went on double dates with Elizabeth Taylor and her then-boyfriend film producer Mike Todd. When Elizabeth Taylor married Mike Todd in 1957, Eddie Fisher was the best man and Debbie Reynolds was the matron of honor to Taylor. So close was the bond that when Reynolds gave birth to a son in 1958, he was given the name Todd in honor of the friendship. Happy moments for Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher were short-lived because their marriage soon started to crumble. According to the podcast, you must remember this, Debbie Fisher was a virgin who lived with her parents when she and the TV star Eddie Fisher married in 1955. Eddie was not a virgin. There were reports that Eddie and Debbie's marriage was arranged by MGM, who had no problem selling the couple as America's sweethearts. But Debbie seemed to have thought it was a real relationship, at least for a while. But after she gave birth to her first child, Carrie, Eddie never seemed to be around. Debbie desperately wanted another kid, but couldn't get her husband to sleep with her. 
Finally, one night on vacation in Italy, Debbie got Eddie drunk enough that he performed his husbandly duties. One time was a charm, and nine months later, Debbie gave birth to their son, Todd. After having two kids and having a family with Debbie Reynolds, Eddie Fisher learned that Debbie Reynolds didn't have a strong sex drive, which also added to their problems. Debbie's success was booming in Hollywood and across the U.S., so much so that it was rumored that Eddie Fisher was allegedly very jealous of Debbie Reynolds' success in Hollywood and in the music industry throughout the marriage. And at various times, Eddie refused to talk to Debbie. For example, when Tammy, a song she sang for the 1957 Tammy and The Bachelor hit the top of the music charts, he stopped talking to her out of sheer jealousy. Almost four weeks after the birth of Reynolds and Fisher's son, Todd Fisher, Elizabeth Taylor's Mike Todd was killed when the private plane he was traveling aboard crashed in New Mexico. In 1958, Eddie Fisher flew to Elizabeth Taylor's side at Debbie Reynolds' request to comfort her. The Fishers were close friends with the Hollywood power couple, Elizabeth Taylor and producer Mike Todd. And when Debbie heard in 1958 that Mike Todd had died in a plane crash and that his private jet Liz plummeted to the ground in New Mexico, she went over to Liz's house and offered to take care of Elizabeth's three children while she grieved. Over the next few weeks, while Debbie was occupied taking care of a total of five children, she knew Eddie was spending a lot of time at Elizabeth's house. But she wasn't worried. After all, Eddie had loved Mike too. Things took an odd turn when Reynolds attended a Hollywood dinner party and heard partygoers gossiping. Reynolds says, quote, Everyone was sort of whispering like, does she know, Reynolds said. So then I put two and two together because I could hear the certain words, Eddie and Elizabeth and such. Hollywood elite gossiped till dawn about Reynolds' personal life. On September 20th, 1958, the eve of the release of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Reynolds knew Elizabeth Taylor was in New York. She thought Eddie was away on tour, and alone in the house with her kids, Reynolds was lonely. She called Elizabeth at her hotel to chat, and Eddie answered. Quote, Suddenly, a lot of things clicked into place, she said. I could hear her voice asking him who was calling. They were obviously in bed together. I yelled at him, Roll over, darling, and let me speak to Elizabeth. Unquote. The Hollywood legend said she ignored the signs of her husband's infidelity, until she couldn't any longer. As she explained, stunned and heartbroken, she realized the rumors were true, that Elizabeth Taylor was carrying on with her husband, Eddie Fisher. During a 1988 ET interview, Reynolds said she didn't think Taylor would ruin her marriage and run off with her husband. Even more troubling was that Debbie Reynolds and Elizabeth Taylor shared Eddie. Reynolds states, quote, We were friends for years and years, Reynolds begins, but we had a lapse of time when she took Eddie to live with her because she liked him too. Gossip columnist Hedda Hopper called Elizabeth Taylor and asked about the rumors about her and Eddie Fisher. Liz did something completely shocking. She told the truth, or at least her version of it. I don't go about breaking up marriages, she says. You can't break up a happy marriage. Debbie's and Eddie's never has been. Then Hedda asked Liz if she loved Eddie. Liz responded, quote, I like him very much. I've felt happier and more like a human being for the last two weeks than I have since Mike's death, unquote. Hedda, what do you suppose Mike would say to this? Elizabeth responded, quote, well, Mike is dead and I'm alive. Liz offered Hedda a kicker that is more explicitly sexual than anything in the movie when she exclaims, What do you expect me to do, sleep alone? For the first time, Liz chose to be with the man in spite of a lot of reasons not to, because she liked having sex with him. After being married to Debbie, who by her own admission was not a very sexual person, Fisher was delighted to be with a woman who had, as he put it, quote, the face of an angel and the morals of a truck driver. When Eddie asked Debbie for a divorce, Debbie warned Eddie that Liz would leave him within 18 months. Debbie Reynolds immediately reported to MGM for instructions. The studio took the jilted wife's side even though the home wrecker was also technically their property. Elizabeth Taylor clearly could and would look out for herself. 
While Liz remained in hiding at her agent's house, subsiding on takeout chili from Chasen's, Debbie played her part in daily photo ops designed to show that, unlike the bad girl, the good girl was not afraid to show her face. Reynolds remained publicly quiet on the subject as Fisher and Taylor did most of the talking. Debbie was directed to go through the motions of trying to repair her marriage with photographers and columnists documenting their every move. Eddie and Debbie went to marriage counseling. But the next day, Debbie came out of the house with her daughter Carrie. And when reporters asked if she and Eddie were separating, Debbie turned to face the cameras and said, quote, he isn't coming home. The next day, Debbie Reynolds filed for divorce. A month after Debbie Reynolds asked Eddie Fisher to comfort Elizabeth Taylor after the tragic plane accident with Mike Todd. The public interest in the love triangle only grew, peaking when Reynolds agreed after a year of hesitation to a quick divorce so Fisher and Taylor could wed. After five years of marriage from 1955 to 1959, Debbie Reynolds divorced Eddie Fisher in 1959, solidifying their Hollywood divorce. That same year, Eddie Fisher immediately married Elizabeth Taylor when his marriage to Reynolds ended. Quote, I never felt bitter about Elizabeth, Reynolds told People in 1983. A man doesn't leave a woman for another woman unless he wants to go. Unquote. Reynolds was devastated over the infidelity, according to her son, who recalls it being one of Hollywood's biggest, most notorious scandals in his 2018 memoir, My Girls, A Lifetime with Carrie and Debbie. Todd Fisher recalls Reynolds getting on with life as a sole parent of two small children who went off to work every day to make movies, while the media blitz surrounding her marriage raged. The world was stunned, Todd writes, Quote, Eddie and Elizabeth were vilified. Eddie was declared as a philandering opportunistic loser. And Elizabeth was labeled as a bad girl, a homewrecker, a slut. Debbie was globally embraced with love and sympathy. The good girl, the innocent, unsuspecting victim, and single mom, unquote. Still, Reynolds had the strength to start over, devoting herself to her children and career. When Debbie Reynolds recalled Eddie Fisher's scandalous behavior in their Hollywood divorce in the 1988 Entertainment Tonight interview, she said, quote, Eddie always wanted to be Mike Todd. He always wanted to be just like Mike, outgoing and everybody loved Mike. Mike was an entrepreneur and a great producer, which was really what Eddie wanted to be. So when Mike passed on, Eddie became Mike. He started smoking cigars. He started drinking. Eddie had never drank, never smoked cigars, and all of a sudden, he just took on this personality. Well, naturally, Elizabeth, who was profoundly mourning, was attracted to Eddie. I thought it was simply that he was filling this terrible void for her. The scandal would have a direct effect on the careers of all involved. For Reynolds and Taylor, the public ordeal would only serve to make them bigger draws at the box office, commanding higher salaries per picture. Eddie Fisher's star power, however, was forever tarnished by his decision to leave his wife and children for Hollywood's most glamorous actress, Elizabeth Taylor. Eddie's variety television program was not renewed in 1959, and he was soon back to touring nightclubs and lounges. In the press, there was outrage. The rift between the former high school friends, Debbie Reynolds and Elizabeth Taylor, remained. Even following Taylor's divorce from Eddie Fisher in 1964, after she had begun an affair with her co-star Richard Burton during the filming of Cleopatra in 1963. Reynolds was wrong. It took more than 30 months for Eddie Fisher and Elizabeth Taylor to split. Fisher and Taylor divorced in 1964 after five years of marriage. Nine days later, Elizabeth Taylor and her co-star Richard Burton married. Reynolds never reconciled with Fisher, but on board the transatlantic cruise ship Queen Elizabeth in 1966, Debbie Reynolds and Elizabeth Taylor, involved in the original triangle, found themselves at close quarters once more. Reynolds and Taylor made amends. And soon, Debbie Reynolds and her husband Carl, Elizabeth Taylor, and Richard Burton were seen together on board. Debbie Reynolds later remarried a millionaire businessman, Harry Carl, in 1960, and they divorced in 1973. 
Eddie Fisher remarried three more times following his divorce from Taylor. Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher's divorce today is one of the most scandalous divorce stories in Hollywood history. Eddie Fisher's betrayal of Debbie Reynolds and the destruction of their marriage goes down in history as one of the most legendary scandals befitting of the Hollywood screen. Their case will be added to the Hollywood divorce files. So there you have it. What did you think about Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher's Hollywood divorce? Did your favorite couple make it into the Hollywood divorce files? We'd love to hear your thoughts about what A-list pair we should include in the show's next episode. Leave a comment below. If you haven't already done so, please like this video, click the bell to stay up to date on our upcoming videos, and subscribe. Also, join us on Instagram, TikTok, and Meta for more content. For more information on Debbie Reynolds' life and career, check out the various book, film, and memorabilia links below. Until next time, this is Hollywood Divorce.